Welcome once again, students, to Chemistry. In this video, we want to talk about the ions that are present in an electrolyte. In our introduction to electrolysis, we define an electrolyte as a compound, which when in molten state or in aqueous solution is able to conduct electricity. That means this electrolyte is supposed to be made up of a compound which is ionic in nature. But in the definition, we said it could either be molten or in an aqueous solution. So we want to look at the ions that are normally present in an electrolyte in case it is made of a molten substance. And the ions that are present in an electrolyte in case it is made of an aqueous solution. Let's look at the molten electrolyte. Here, the ions that are present in the compound are the only ions involved here. Just think about it. When we melt sodium chloride, it is just sodium chloride plus heat. So the liquid we are going to obtain is going to contain only sodium ions and the chloride ions. Sodium ions are positively charged. Chloride ions are negatively charged. Therefore, at the anode, which is positively charged, the chloride ions, which are negatively charged, are going to be attracted. At the cathode, which is negatively charged, the positively charged ion, in which case over here is sodium ions, are going to be attracted. Imagine you have molten Pb, Br2, let 2 bromide. Molten. When we melt this, we are going to get let 2 ions and 2 bromide ions. That is what we are going to get. So in such an electrolyte, the ions present are Pb2 plus and Br minus. The anode is positively charged, so it is going to attract the negatively charged particles, which is the bromide ions. And the cathode, which is negatively charged, will attract the positive part, which is the Pb2 plus. Your question. Your question is, what if we have calcium iodide? Try and isolate the positively charged particle, negatively charged particle. Then you know where the positively charged particle will be attracted to and where the negatively charged particle will also be attracted to. Simple. Okay, let's talk about aqueous electrolytes. Here, the ions are going to come from two uh, places. One, from the compound, and two, from water. During the self-ionization of water, self-ionization of water, which is a reversible reaction, we are going to get hydrogen ions, then hydroxyl, Ions. That is when water undergoes dissociation on its own. So we can say confidently that water contains hydrogen ions and hydroxyl ions. So if you add water to a solid substance or a liquid substance which is ionic, then you dissolve them in the water. What happens? What happens is we have ions from that ionic compound being in the solution. Then we also have hydrogen ions and hydroxyl ions from the water also over there. To apply this, let's look at sodium chloride. Aqueous sodium chloride. This means that we took some common salts 
Then we added water. Then we stirred for it to what? Dissolve. So over there, the ions that are going to be present in the solution are sodium ions from the sodium chloride, chloride ions from the sodium chloride. Then from the water, we are going to have hydrogen ions and hydroxyl ions. So whenever you have an electrolyte, and that electrolyte is not made up of a molten substance, but an aqueous solution, remember, the ions present in the electrolytes are from two sources, the compound itself and from water. In which case, we have hydrogen and hydroxyl ion coming from the water. When that happens, what happens at the anode and the cathode? At the anode, we know the anode is positively charged. So it will attract all the negatively charged species. So, in the case of aqueous sodium chloride, the negatively charged species are chloride ions, then the hydroxyl ions. They will be attracted to the anode. The cathode is negatively charged. So it would attract the positively charged ions. In the case of aqueous sodium chloride, the positively charged ions are sodium ions, then hydrogen ions. So these two are going to be attracted to the cathode. But remember, we said that in electrolysis, the anode attracts the negatively charged ions and then take electrons from the negatively charged ions and carry that electron through the battery and enter the cathode and give it to the positively charged ions that have been attracted to the what? Cathode. Here we have two negatively charged ions. Who gives away the electrons? Over here at the cathode, we have two positively charged ions. So when the electrons come, who takes the electrons? Remember, in the molten state, we just have the ions coming from the compound. So we will just have one negatively charged ion, one positively charged ion. That one negatively charged ion will go to the anode, then the one positively charged ion will go to the cathode. So over there, you take the electron from the anode, which is made up of only one substance, and the electrons will be given to the cathode, where we are going to have only one substance. But in the case of aqueous electrolytes, we have two species, two different species at the anode, then two different species at the cathode. So at the anode, who loses? At the cathode, who gains? There are factors that determine who will lose and who will gain. In our next video, we are going to talk about those factors into details. Thank you.